Hello everyone, this is the video presentation of my new project. The way the material is presented in this video is a bit different from usual, but the essence remains the same. So here is the presentation of the project, MyWeld version 2.0. We'll be looking at both the auto version and the pro version. Development date, March, April 2025. It's important to emphasize that this project is non-commercial. It is distributed completely free of charge to authors and developers, provided that copyright is respected. Anyone interested can download and replicate it as a gesture of thanks. The current version of the project as of May 2025 is version 2.0. The current version of the software is also version 2.0. I consider the original version of the project, version 1.0, to be outdated. It is fully functional, but it does not have the auto mode. The version 2.0 auto board was specifically designed to be made at home. The Pro version works and operates exactly the same as the Auto version. The only difference is in the circuit boards. For the Pro version, these are double-sided boards with metallization, made at a factory. The power board is separate and supports 12 transistors, and it has a more powerful converter. Other than that, it's the same device. In the video, I'll often be switching back and forth between the different versions. Project Description This is a device for spot welding battery contacts, based on the 8 Mega 328 and Arduino Nano. In my opinion, the printed circuit boards for the Pro version turned out really beautiful. Naturally, they were ordered from JLCPCB. If you want to replicate the project, download the archive, find the folder named Gerber, and upload it to the JLCPCB website. Next, you select the necessary options such as the solder mask color and the type of trace coating, pay for your order, and receive these amazing boards. The company can manufacture printed circuit boards of any complexity, shape, and number of layers, up to 32 layers. Prices start at just $2 for a batch of 5 boards, each measuring 10 by 10 centimeters. They also offer high-quality 3D printing services in the production of solder stencils. There is a $30 coupon available for six-layer boards, and new partners get bonuses and discounts, so don't wait. When you buy boards from JLC, you can always be sure that the quality will be high and the price will be low, thanks to their streamlined processes, full production cycle, and strict quality control. JLC PCB is easy to use, affordable to produce, and reliable in operation. The link is in the description. The device is a spot welding control system with an integrated power section using powerful MOSFET transistors. The welding current source consists of two supercapacitors, 2.7 volts, 3000 farads each, connected in series. As a result, the final voltage of the supercapacitor battery when fully charged is 5.4 volts. Components The device consists of several modules, the main printed circuit board, the motherboard, an Arduino nano board, a KY04 rotary encoder module with a button, and a 20x4 LCD display with an I2C interface module. Options and settings. The device has two operating modes, manual and automatic. All settings and parameters work exactly the same way in both modes. Manual mode or MAN. Welding is controlled by an external button or pedal. Automatic mode or auto. Welding is triggered by the short-circuiting of the welding electrodes. In auto mode, an additional parameter S is introduced. This is the delay before welding. When a short circuit of the electrodes is detected, the device waits for the S time. Only after that does the welding pulse occur. When a short circuit of the electrodes is detected, the beeper will emit a short sound. If the electrodes are separated during the S time, welding will not start. The device can also operate in both single pulse and double pulse modes, with a delay between the pulses. If you only need single pulse mode, set the time for the second pulse, P2, to 0 milliseconds. Functionality The 20x4 display shows the following parameters. The first line shows P1 and T. P1 is the duration of the first welding pulse, and T is the delay between the pulses. 
The second line shows P2, which is the duration of the second pulse. All values are in milliseconds. The parameters P1, T, and P2 can be adjusted from 0 to 50 milliseconds in 1 millisecond increments. It's also important to note that there is an optional delay between P1 and P2, which is 10 milliseconds. So even if you set the T parameter to 0 milliseconds, there will still be a 10 millisecond delay between the pulses, and it is added to the T delay. This is an extra safety measure to ensure the control system works correctly at short delays, and it does not affect operation in any other way. On the second line of the display on the left, there's the light parameter. This is the brightness level of the backlight, adjustable from 0 to 5. However, 0 doesn't mean the backlight is off, it's just the dimmest setting. On the third line of the display, there's the mode parameter. This is the operating mode, either auto or manual. In automatic mode, the C parameter appears next to it. This is the hold time after the electrodes are closed. You can adjust this parameter from 0.3 to 2 seconds. In man mode, the C parameter disappears. The bottom line of the display is a voltmeter that shows the actual voltage of the power source. You select a parameter by turning the encoder. An arrow will appear in front of the selected parameter. To edit the selected parameter, Press and hold the encoder button. You'll hear a beep, and the selected parameter will start blinking. In this mode, turning the encoder will edit the selected parameter. To save, press and hold the encoder again. Operating principle and circuit description. The heart of the circuit is an Atmega 328 microcontroller. The project uses a ready-made Arduino nano board. Power from the supercapacitor battery at 5.4 volts first goes to a boost converter, which outputs between 12 and 15 volts. This voltage is necessary to power the gate driver. In this project, a powerful TC4422 driver is used. It provides very fast switching on and off of the power transistors. To ensure the transistors are fully turned on and their on-state resistance is as low as possible, a gate voltage of at least 10 volts is required. That's why a boost converter is used. The voltage converter is quite powerful and is built around the XR2981 chip for the auto version. For the pro version, a different converter is used, more powerful and highly efficient, based on the TPS61088 chip. In this case, the output voltage of the converter is not 15 volts like the first one, but a bit lower, 12 volts. This limitation is due to the TPS61088 chip itself. The power supply for the control system, Arduino and so on, is taken from the 15 volt line and stepped down to 5 volts using a linear regulator. The latter does not require a heat sink. The start button for manual mode is optically connected to the control system. I want to emphasize this is not an attempt to provide galvanic isolation, it's simply an optical connection. Why is this necessary? If a pedal or start button is used, which is located in the electrode holder, during welding interference will be induced on the long wires of the button, which can lead to possible malfunctions or glitches. With the optical solution, the level of this interference would have to be high enough to activate the LED in the optical link. That's unlikely. You can do without optics, but it's more reliable with it. Capacitors are used throughout the circuit to improve noise immunity as well as large-value electrolytic or tantalum capacitors to compensate for voltage drops during welding. The gates of the switches are additionally protected by a Zener diode and have a pull-down resistor to ground. A voltmeter is connected to pin A2 of the Arduino board to monitor the 15-volt line. A voltmeter for monitoring the voltage on the power supply is connected to pin A1. Pin A3 is used to monitor the voltage at the drains of the switches. When the electrodes are shorted, there will be a positive voltage at the drains of the switches. This is exactly how the system detects that the electrodes are shorted. This monitoring is necessary for the automatic operating mode. Pin D9 is used to control the brightness of the display backlight. To start, we take a 20 by 4 display with an I2C interface module and locate the single transistor on this module. This transistor is the one that controls the display backlight. Next, we find the base of this transistor and disconnect it from the main circuit by desoldering a single base resistor. Then, to the now free base, we connect a LED resistor with a resistance between 1 kilohm and 3.3 kilohms. The free end of this resistor is then connected by wire to the D9 pin on the Arduino board. In the Pro version, this resistor is already soldered onto the control board. 
The lower LED in the diagram indicates the presence of output control pulses from the Arduino board. Another pair of LEDs shows the presence of power on the 15 volt and 5 volt lines, although in the latter case, the 5 volts is also indicated by an LED on the Arduino board. Important! The control system itself does not include a charging and balancing circuit for the supercapacitors. Protections. The device is equipped with a number of electronic and software protections. First, there is self-diagnosis of all options, which is performed automatically after the device is turned on. This test takes about 10 to 12 seconds. There is protection against low supply voltage. If the voltage on the supercapacitor battery is less than 4.5 volts, the control system may not function properly, so there is a low voltage protection set at less than 4.5 volts. If this protection is triggered, welding cannot be performed. In this case, the word low will appear on the lower line of the display next to the voltmeter. This protection is automatically reset if the voltage on the supercapacitors rises above 4.5 volts. At the same time, if this protection is activated, the information on the display does not disappear. Settings can still be edited, but welding will not be possible. Gate control protection. If the voltage at the output of the boost converter drops below 10 or rises above 18 volts, this can lead to the failure of the power transistors. So a protection is provided for less than 10, more than 18. If this protection is triggered, all information on the display disappears and the specified message will be shown. At the same time, the beeper will emit periodic sounds and the device will stop responding to all control elements. This protection is reset only if the 15 volt supply is back to normal and only after the device is restarted. There is also additional protection against overvoltage at the gates based on a Zener diode, protection against incorrect power supply polarity at the input, as well as protection of the switches from possible back EMF spikes at the device output. Important! All software-based protections operate on a monitoring principle, meaning they do not trigger immediately, but instead continuously monitor for about one and a half seconds. The protection will only activate if the voltage does not return to normal during the monitoring period. This is a necessary measure to prevent false triggers, since voltage drops can occur during welding. The Pro version has additional suppressor protections for certain Arduino lines. Testing and component selection. The device is powered on and off using the S1 toggle switch. At the very beginning, regardless of which version you are assembling, you should not solder in the Arduino board yet. First, you need to power up the boost converter and make sure it is working properly. Then check that 5 volts are reaching the Arduino board. In the case of the Pro version, you may notice a red wire on the board that connects the enable pin of the TPS61088 chip to the power supply positive to start the converter. I wanted to implement additional protection, so on my boards, the enable pin was left floating. Later, I decided to abandon this protection and connected the enable pin to the positive rail to start it. On the boards from the archive, you don't need to do anything like that because the trace already connects this pin to the positive rail. Also, in the case of the Pro version, to form the 5 volt lines, you need to close the specified jumper. Through it, a voltage of about 12 volts is supplied to the input of the 5 volt linear regulator. It's a kind of technical jumper. The Pro version also has test points for checking the main voltages and output pulses. Before the first startup of the device, the multi turn trimmer resistor R6 should be set to the middle position. After powering on, Turn this resistor until the voltmeter on the display shows the actual voltage value of the power supply. After the initial startup, check all the options, all the adjustments, and the protections. Lower the power supply voltage below 4.5 volts. Make sure that the undervoltage protection is triggered and that the device does not respond to the start button. Then gradually increase the power supply, making sure that everything exits protection mode correctly and the device responds to the start button. Next, either lower or raise the 15 volt line and make sure that the protection for this line is triggered and that it does not reset automatically. Then turn off the device, restore the 15 volt line, and start it up again. Make sure that the protection has not been triggered. Then take an oscilloscope, switch it to standby mode, and connect it to any gate. Take a 12 volt automotive bulb, about 60 to 100 watts, and connect it to the device's output. Press the start button. The bulb won't have time to light up because the pulses are too short. 
but the indicator LED will blink. You will see control pulses on the oscilloscope screen. Make sure the pulses are sharp, have a clear rectangular shape, and that both their duration and the delay between pulses match the set values. And again, I want to point out that you need to add 10 milliseconds of optional delay to the measured delay between pulses. Repeat the same procedure for the auto mode. Make sure there is a response when the electrodes are shorted. If everything is fine, start welding. For the power wires, you'll generally need a cross section of 16 square millimeters or more. To start, set the duration of the first and second pulses to no more than 2 or 3 milliseconds. This duration is enough for welding strips that are 0.1 to 0.12 millimeters thick. Test the operation in both automatic and manual modes. Before welding, be sure to put on safety glasses, and it's best to cover the power transistors with something. The project has passed all tests, both in real-world conditions and in simulation. All modes and options were checked. The tests were successfully passed. As a current source, I use two LSUC supercapacitors, 2.7 volts, 3,000 farads each, connected in series. The measured welding current on the shunt, 100 amps, 75 millivolts, was 2,000 amps. For actual welding without the shunt, the device will deliver 3,000 amps of current. If you need more, just add another pair of capacitors and 12 transistors. In that case, you'll get an average of 5 to 6,000 amps of current. It's also possible to use a supercapacitor configuration of 2S2P or 2S3P, provided that the power section uses 10 to 16 original IRL40SC228 transistors. In that case, the device will easily handle strips that are 0.8 mm thick, and possibly even thicker. Even with this setup, two supercapacitors and six transistors, you can weld pure copper that's 0.2 mm thick. And the device can also do this. Go big or go home. Three strips, 0.15 millimeters thick. Weld them to the terminal. I won't change the timing of the first and second pulses to avoid risk. At the moment, I have absolutely no compression protection whatsoever. Let's give it a try. Sparks are flying right into my face. You absolutely need to wear goggles for experiments like this because it's really dangerous. Here's what we ended up with, and if this welded together, then in theory it should handle 0.45 or even 0.5 millimeter strips. Damn, it looks like it's cooked, guys. Honestly, I thought I was going to break the tool. Everything is welded together. Awesome. I strongly recommend using N-channel MOSFET transistors as power switches, with a drain source voltage of at least 25 to 30 volts, and an on resistance of no more than 1.8 milliohms. Here, the lower the value, the better. Make sure the transistors are truly original, otherwise they'll blow up instantly when you try to weld. I'm not planning to switch the project over to more advanced controllers like STM or ESP32 and so on, because I think it's pointless considering that the Atmega 328 is more than enough for the job. After many years of experience building these kinds of devices, though analog ones, as well as studying factory models, upgrading and repairing them, I've come to the conclusion that many of the options they have are pointless. In 99% of cases, the operator only uses the time, pulse and delay parameters, as well as manual and automatic modes. Fancy graphics, a pulse counter, changing the language, date, time and so on, in my opinion, all of that is pointless in a device like this. A regular LCD display is more than enough. And the features built into this device are more than sufficient for any kind of work. Right now, I'm developing a case model for the device for 3D printing, as well as a powerful supercapacitor charger with an integrated balancing circuit. All improvements and updates will be added to the free archive, which you can find via the link in the description of this and other videos on my channels dedicated to this project. My contact email is also listed in the description. If your question is related to this project, please title your email My Welt. Once again, I want to emphasize that this project is non-commercial. It is distributed free of charge to authors and developers, provided that copyright is respected. So feel free to use it to your heart's content. And with that, one of the longest videos on this channel is coming to an end. Thank you for putting up with me all this time. As always, this was Kazyanov K. With you, until next time, bye.